I'm the Red Apple Dude, and here with me is Hoovy. Hey guys, it's Hoovy from Hoovy's channel and the Sonic Sanctuary page on Facebook. Alright, and we're and today we're interviewing Mike Pollock. Thank doing? you so much. Great to be here. Uh, how you doing, Mike? So far, so good. That's great. Uh, Hoovy? Alright, well, we might as well get the ball, get the ball rolling. <laughs> Alright, Mike, first question. Um, how do you get into character with any voice acting role you do? Uh, figure out what the director wants, figure out what the uh, character looks like, and experiment. See if they have any suggestions or thoughts on the matter. And uh, take a few guesses at it. And if they're lucky, we find a voice we like. And if they're not lucky, if I'm auditioning and they don't like what I'm doing, they'll cast somebody else. All right, all right. Um, I read that you're really into radio um, as a child. How did that um, transfer over to voice acting? Radio is essentially voice acting in a different, uh, in a different sphere. Uh, I was in radio for a while, and a lot of it is just improvised, talking up records if you're a disc jockey. But the commercial reading part, if you get to uh, get lucky enough to perform in commercials, that's essentially voice acting. Uh, you just happen to be selling products. I do commercials to this day. And it's the same basic concept. So right. many different aspects of radio, but the aspect I like is the performance part, doing wacky character voices in commercials. Cool. That's great. All right. Um, before you were a voice actor, what was your radio and voice acting career like? I uh, worked at, uh, as a part-timer at a radio station in Syracuse, New York, for almost 10 years. Uh, transferred to a radio station in Rochester, where I became a production director. They didn't like that idea, so I moved out and went back, uh, back down to New York to join a syndication outfit, working in what we called, jokingly, Radio Purgatory. It was radio, but there was no actual radio station behind it. We were <laughs> supplying content to radio stations around the country. And uh, after radio syndication and the radio industry in general took a turn for the worse, I branched out and built a character reel, sent it out to studios, and embarked on uh, a standalone and nothing but voiceover career. All right. Uh, excuse me. Uh, did you ever have any desire about becoming an actor instead of a voice actor? I'm an actor. Voice acting is acting. I just happened to specialize in voice. I've done stage work, various theater, theater projects, a couple of on-camera things. But the magic of voiceover is you could squeeze in five jobs in a day. You can't do that in any other aspect of acting. That is true. Very yes. true. <laughs> I like that. All right. Um... I bet you had a very, very vivid imagination as a kid. Um, did your parents ever think you had multiple friends over instead of just you? Mm, no, not usually. Ah. Down in the basement, the door was closed. I was cranking uh, kitty records and studying the performances of some legendary animation uh, actors. And they figured that part out. Okay. Ah. Uh, do you have any type of support when you, um, as a voice actor? In terms of what? Uh, just in terms of like uh, directing, directing you towards uh, getting into character and anything like that. Well, in most cases, if I'm going to a studio, there's a director there, there's uh, the producer there, there are various parts of the client team, and uh, we're working together to make sure that everybody is doing what's supposed to be done. So my job is to please the client, and I can't really leave the studio until they're happy with what I've done. So it's very much a team effort. But we've got to work together and make sure that I can give them what they need. Okay. Um, what made you feel you could do the voice of Eggman when you first auditioned for him? I was, they auditioned me. They sent me samples of Dean Bristow. I listened to them, tried to do a voice match. They said, sound like this guy. So I started doing Dean Bristow. Dean Bristow look at me. I'm Dean Bristow. Put in for an audition. And they said, okay, that's great. Called me back a couple days later, said we want you to come back in for another callback. We're not sure. Uh, nobody's convinced. Went back into the same Dean Bristol. I'm Dean Bristol. There was one more round of callbacks after that. And finally, Sega was convinced that I was the guy for the job. Uh, how difficult was it for you to get started? Um, not terribly difficult. I sent out a couple of demo reels. One of them uh, caught the interest of the people behind Pokemon at the time, which was for kids production. And then I got another uh, anime production company that used me for a job on uh, a, an OVA called Demon Fighter Kocho. So the first two gigs happened fairly quickly. 
and then a lot of networking and a lot of uh, return engagements. All right. Uh, Hoobie? All right. Um, what are some of the obstacles you face as a VA? Uh, the constant search for work. The actual work is the play part of the festivities, but looking for that work is the challenge. I'm constantly receiving auditions by email from various agents and managers. If they're sending me places, I just came from an audition in Manhattan just a couple of hours ago. And sometimes I'll get auditions at home, and my job is to turn them around as quickly as possible and hope for the best. And very often, there's a, as with most actors, the audition to booking ratio is very, very vast. So tons and tons of auditions, very few bookings. But figuring when you're competing against tens of people or hundreds of people in some cases, the odds are against you. All right. Uh, how do you stay motivated? Uh, my constant uh, addiction to food, clothing, and shelter. <laughs> <laughs> uh. All right. Um, random question. Um, what was your first job experience? It was a gate guard at a country club. Really? Yep. Okay. Um, do you have anything on besides voice acting on the side? Uh, no, voice acting is an all-consuming uh, uh, thing. I've got to be available at a moment's notice to go out for auditions and bookings. So, best thing to do is keep the schedule clear and keep on working. Okay. All right. Okay. Hard working, man. All right. Um, I understand if you can't answer this question, but will we be seeing any of the Eggman in a possible Wreck-It Ralph 2? I was in Wreck-It Ralph 1, so I don't know what's going on with Wreck-It Ralph 2. All right. Um, uh, final, two final questions. Um, what are your plans for the future as far as entertainment? Uh, I will keep on uh, auditioning and with any luck booking jobs as long as possible until I can't do it anymore. That's right. your job. That's what I do. All right. All right. Is and there any specific direction that you would like it to go? I'd like to be in some big screen theatrical thing or some big primetime series, but I love working. Whether it's the most boring industrial narration or a wacky, crazy cartoon, the fact that someone has hired me and wants to pay me for reading is spectacular. Yes. <laughs> Oh my gosh! Uh, it was an honor having you on this on the show, Mike Pollock. I I greatly appreciate your time, and uh, thank you all for watching. Take care and have a great night. Thanks so much. Thank you.